Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Ronald Coleman in In Which We Serve with Edna Best. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The slim gray shape of a destroyer is a thing of beauty as it knifes through the sea, and a thing of power and fury with its guns ablaze. But look below the steel shell, and you'll find a heart and a personality, intimately known to the captain on the bridge and to the men who are proud to be called destroyer sailors. One of the finest craftsmen of the theater in our time probed deep into the heart of a destroyer and gave us the epic motion picture in which we serve. In fact, Noel Coward not only wrote it, but also produced, directed, and acted in it. We consider its presentation an event in this theater. And we have a star in keeping with its importance. That star is Ronald Coleman. Sharing honors with Ronnie tonight is the very accomplished actress, Miss Edna Best. In which we serve, I said, was the story of a ship. That's true. But the ship is the captain, and the chief petty officer, and the torpedo man, and an ordinary seaman, and their wives, and mothers, and sweethearts, and children. His Majesty's ship, Taran, is all these, and the touch of Dunkirk, and the North Sea, and the Battle of Crete. And its story is told in the events that flash through the minds of the crew as they cling to a life raft in the Mediterranean. Dramas like this don't come from any ordinary typewriter, unless the right man is on the sending end. And they don't come to life here by themselves. But every bit of effort and care is repaid when we run across a note like this one from two members of the audience, which Lux Toilet Soap brings together each week. It's signed by a husband and wife who write, We'd like to send a word of gratitude for a real show each Monday night. We're a pair of middle-aged war workers. We have 11 and a half hours at home out of each 24. Just enough time to eat, sleep, get a Lux soap bath, and go back to work. And thank you, and thank you again. When people like that give us one of those very precious hours of leisure and use our product, too, we just can't uh, let them down. And we won't the play you'll hear now. It's curtain time for In Which We Serve, and Act One, starring Ronald Coleman as Captain Kinross, with Edna Best as Alex. Aircraft in sight, bearing red for O. Enemy aircraft! Hoist enemy aircraft! Bearing red for O. Angle of sight, one five. Off the island of Crete in May 1941, the British destroyer Taran is under attack. The ship twists and turns through the sea. From her deck comes the pounding rhythm of the pom-pom gun as she fights gallantly for her life. But the odds are too great. Wave after wave of German Junkers sweep downward from the clouds to release their screaming loads of death and destruction. Now the ship is wounded. She keels over to starboard. Her decks are washed. From the sky, the last of the bombers is dropping like a stone toward the Taran's masthead. Out of port. Out of port, sir. This one's coming in much lower, sir. Probably hit our mast. Rapid salvos. Oh, gun! Rapid salvos! Here he comes. He'll hit the mast for sure, sir. He's coming right. <laughs> you all right, Captain? <coughs> Well done, guns. We got him, but I'm afraid he's got us, too. Midships. She won't answer her wheel, sir. Steering gear's gone. Stop both engines. Stop both, sir. Stop both. No answer from the engine room, sir. The telegraphs must be shot away. I'm afraid we're going over. Pass the word for all hands. Cast loose the Carly float. All hands. Cast loose Carly float. Here it is, sir. She's turning over. is down. The Tarion has gone down. And captain of a dead ship 
get to the top. I must get to the top. Lungs bursting. Get to the top. That noise. What is it? The Tyrone's engines. Yes, she's still fighting. Tyrone's still fighting. The Tyrone, my ship. When was it I took command? August. August 1939. My ship. The Tyrone. Are you prepared to take over the Tyrone, Captain General? Yes. I'll sign for her now. I'll sign for her now. I'll sign for her now. Sawyer's coming aboard, sir. The manager of the shipyard. Yes, we're taking over the Tyrone today. Is number one bringing him down? Yes, sir. Hands all off? Yes, sir. Good. Well, Edgecombe, how are you coming on? Your cabin's all snug, sir. And those curtains help, if I may say it, sir. Yes, they do, don't they? This picture of Mrs. Kinross, sir, shall we have it on the desk or the shelf, sir? Shelf for the moment. We'll have the usual one on the desk when you find it. The one in the wedding dress, sir? Uh, yes. It's here, sir. Oh, yes, thanks. Let me have it. Hmm? By the way, Edgecombe, we're commissioning the tower in tomorrow morning. I'll spend the night at home. You can drive me. That'll give you a bit of leave. Thank you, sir. Come in. Oh, good morning, Sawyer. Good morning, Captain Kinross. Sit down. Everything in order? Certainly. I have the papers right here, Captain. Well, we'll get the little ceremony over with, and then we'll go on deck. Were you satisfied with the full-power trial? Yes, she's a well-found ship. Thank you. Now then, uh, are you prepared to take over the Torrens, sir? Yes, I'll sign for her now. Time for her now. Get to the top. Get above water. I'll spend the night at home. You can drive me. I'll spend the night at home. Daddy! 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 Hello there. Daddy! We thought you were never coming. We've been waiting for hours and hours. You have? Mummy wanted us to go to bed, but we wouldn't. Hello, darling. Everything under control? Oh, far from it. We've been in an uproar all day, ever since your telegram came. Come into the house, darling. I've been holding dinner. We saw the ship, Daddy. We saw the current. You did? We took our tea under the cliff and thought to a bike. Quite close. Not it, Navi. Her. Ah, that's right, son. She looks beautiful, Teddy. It was thrilling. How fast was she going, Daddy? Was she going 40 knots? Good heavens, no. Only about 20. But she can do more than that, can't she? You bet she can. When would you like dinner, darling? Now? Oh, Any time you say. Can I tell him what you've got for dinner, Mummy? Of course you can. It's a surprise. She mustn't spoil it, must she, Mummy? Do keep still, Bobby. There's a dear. Teddy, how long have you got? Only until the morning, I'm afraid. The morning? Is Daddy, that all? Will we come to the duckyard tomorrow and see her? I'm afraid not, old man. I'll be too busy. We're commissioning. Making a rash job of it. But Mummy promised Now, that's that quite we... enough, darling. You heard what Daddy said. But we shall be able to come on board before you go away, shan't we? Yes, we'll make time somehow. When, Daddy? Oh, don't be so persistent, Bobby. Let Daddy relax for a minute. Give him a cigarette. There's a good boy. Let me. Oh, let me. Sit down, darling. You must be exhausted. I'll mix you a drink. Cocktail or a whiskey and soda? Well, seeing that it's a gala evening, let's have a Kinross special, shall we? And I'll bet you've forgotten to lay in the Cointreau. You've been wrong again. Here it is. Here, Daddy. Cigarette. Thanks, Bobby. Let me light it. Children, you really must go to bed now. It's dreadfully late. Oh, Mommy. Oh, Daddy will come up and say good night to you before dinner if you're quick. I want to hear about the ship, Mommy. I'll tell you all about it in the morning, Bobby. We'll have an early breakfast and you can fire as many questions at me as you like. It'll be good. Now do as your mother tells you and go to bed. Can I have questions, too? <laughs> you never do anything else, darling. Now go on, off with you both. I'll come up in ten minutes. Promise? Promise. Are you coming up, too, Mommy? Yes, darling. Come on, lovey, I'll race you. You're cheating, Bobby. You want head start. Come on. Oh, children. <laughs> They've been wild with excitement all day. I'm so glad you got home, Teddy. Yes, so am I. Was the trial satisfactory, darling? Were you pleased? More than pleased. She's a lovely ship. Beautiful manners, does what she's told without a murmur. Why are you making such a rush job of the commissioning? Oh, I don't know. I like getting things done quickly. Is that the only reason? We live in strange times, darling. It's as well to be prepared for anything. Yes. Here, try this. It may be a little too sweet. There's nothing to worry about, you know. <laughs> of course not. Well, here's to you, my love. To you, my love. Mmm, just right. Not a bit too sweet. Well, did you miss me? Of course not. I've been far too busy. I never gave you a thought. That's the girl. Now, now tell me, what's the, uh, what's the surprise for dinner? Grant. Marine sent us a brace from Scotland. Good for Marine. There's a girl of really fine perception. Uh, by the way, is, is that a new dress? 
No, dear. I've had it for ages. I'll swear I've never clapped eyes on it before. <laughs> Only about 20 times, my darling. <laughs> Perhaps it's you that looks new. As good as new, anyway. Teddy, is there going to be a war, do you think? Yes, I think there is. Oh. There's no use worrying about it until it comes. No. Yeah, yeah. Now, don't be sad, darling. I'm not sad, really. I'm just gathering myself together. Is there any more of that Jim Ross special left in the shaker? Oh, of course. Teddy, no matter how busy you are and however quickly you get your commissioning done, I should like to come on board once before you go to sea. Just to give the ship my love. Darling, you'll have to. Whether you like it or not, my cabin's got to be made presentable. <laughs> Does the tints look all right? Lovely. Very shiny, very smooth. Gay as can be. Good. Now let's drink this quickly and go out to the children. Dinner will be ready in a minute. Here we go. Here we go. Get to the top. Get to above water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another stroke. Another. One more. One more. One more. Captain Kinross, are you all right, sir? All right. You you were you were under so long, sir. Where's where's the float? There's one over there, sir. Men, swim to the float. Over this way. Uh, uh, She's still above water, sir. Eh? Torrent, sir. Yeah. Just her keel showing, but she's still on top. Oh, yes. Lend a hand, mate. This one's got it pretty bad. He can't hang on much longer. Get him onto the float. Well, I've got his arm. Give a lift there. Up you go, mate. There we are. Who, who is he? Hardy, sir. Chief uh, Buffer. Hardy? Uh, anyone got any brandy? I've got some in me. Jeeves, sir. Let's, let's have it. Here, sir. Hardy. Oh, oh, take a swallow. Oh. That's it. Oh, calf. Calf. What's he saying? Calf, sir, his wife. He's taking a verse, sir. Oh, oh. Calf. One, one more swallow. That's right. That's it. Calf, where are you? Calf. Calf, do you hear? Calf, girl. We're commissioning the time today. I've got to hurry. Calf girl, you here? Yes, Lupe. Come in. Calf. Calf girl. We're commissioning the torrent today. I've got to hurry. Yes, Lupe. Come in. Here's your coffee and here's the paper, dear. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's nearly half past. Don't have much time to read more than the headlines. Hmm. News doesn't look too good, does it? Oh, you can't believe anything they say. Do you really think we're going to have another war, Walter? Oh, looks like it. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, if you ask me, you'll see it quicker than you're bargained for. I think we're in for it. Well, if we have another war, I give up, see? After all, we went through the last time. All oh, you went through. Why, you were too young and innocent to know anything about it. Oh, don't talk so silly, Walter Hardy. You know perfectly well how old I am. And it's no use pretending you don't. Oh, now, <laughs> you'll always be young and innocent to me. Oh, will I indeed now? That's what I said. Well, I must be going. Uh, is your mother coming downstairs? Oh, I promised I'd call her. Mother, Walt is just going. You'd better come down if you are. Oh, that'll be nice. Will you get a short again after commissioning? Before you go to sea, I mean. Well, that all depends. Now, don't forget to put them bulbs in when the right time comes. <laughs> you and your bulbs. Well, give us a kiss, eh? Goodbye, old girl. Why, Walter Hardy, whatever is the matter with you this morning? Anybody would think you was going away forever. Well, you never know, do you? Oh, you you ought to be ashamed of yourself saying such things. Oh, here comes Mother. Well, Mother? Oh, that spirit lamp of mine will be the death of me yet. What's the matter with it, Mother? Oh, it blew up again. Frightened the wits out of me. Well, I don't see what you want to go fussing about with spirit lamps in your bedroom for. You could easily pop down in the kitchen. Nobody would see you. I've made me own tea in my own bedroom all my life, and I don't see any reason to stop now. It doesn't happen to be your own bedroom. It's my sphere. And if you go on blowing things up in it every five minutes, it won't be fit to sleep in. Oh, now, stop it, you two. I've got to go now. Goodbye, Mother. Nice thing when my own daughter starts criticizing me. Oh, keep quiet, Mother. Say goodbye to Walter. That's what you came down for, isn't it? Will you get ashore again? Well, that all depends on Hitler. Hitler? Who does he think he is anyway? Ah, oh, that's the spirit, Mother. Now, look after Kath for me. 
And don't go nagging at each other from morning till night. Nagging? I like that, I must say. Well, goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Wolf. Goodbye, old girl. Goodbye. Goodbye, Lord. Ship's coming there! Halt! Ship's coming there, present, sir. Thank you. Send them at ease. Aye, sir. Ship's coming there! Send that! Uh, break ranks and gather around me, will you? Oh, come a bit nearer. I don't want to have to shout. Can you hear me all right in the back row? Yes, sir. We can hear you fine. Good. Well, you all know it's the, the custom of the service for the captain to address the ship's company on commissioning day. Give him his policy and tell him the ship's program. My policy is easy. If there are any here who have served with me before, they'll know what it is. Uh, are there any old shipmates of mine here? Hmm? Show your hands, will you? Oh, glad to see you again, Johnson. And, uh, who's that? Coombe and Adams. Hello, Reynolds. Uh, who, who's that small fellow hiding his face behind the chief stoker? Parkinson, sir. Ah, Parkinson, yes. You, you were, uh, you were coxswain of the old comers whaler in the Valletta, weren't you? I was that, sir, when we won the old comers cup in the 1936 regatta. Yes, and fell into the ditch when you got back to the ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are enough old shipmates to tell the others what my policy has always been. Johnson, Coombe, Adams, Reynolds, Parkinson. What sort of a ship do I want the Tarrant to be, hmm? Come on, Reynolds. An efficient ship, sir. That's right. A happy ship, sir. Correct. A happy and efficient ship. Some of you might think I'm a bit ambitious, wanting both, but... But in my experience, you can't have one without the other. A ship can't be happy unless she's efficient, and she certainly won't be efficient unless she's happy. All right, now for our program. Uh, you've most of you seen the commissioning program of the Torin, published in Plymouth General Orders. And you'll have noted that this allows the customary three weeks. In peacetime, it takes all of the three weeks to get a new ship's company together. Let them sling their hammocks and teach them their stations and various duties. But you've read your papers, and you know what's going on in the world. As I see it, it means war next week. So I'll give you not three weeks, but exactly three days to get this ship ready to sail. None of us will take off clothes or sling hammocks or turn in for the next three days and nights until the job is finished. Then we'll... Then we'll send Hitler a telegram saying the Tarin is ready, you can start your war. <laughs> September 3rd, 1940. Today, from his cabinet room at 10 Downing Street, the Prime Minister declared that a state of war now exists between England and Germany. Come on. Hardy, one more. More swallow. Oh. That's an enemy plane, sir. I believe she sighted the float. We're in for it, I suppose. Keep down, everyone. If she passes over us, Get under the water. Here she comes, sir. All right. Down. Well, he, he couldn't come much closer, could he? Uh, anyone hit? I, I, don't, I don't think so, sir. Well, he, he'll be back, I imagine. Yes, sir. Torin doesn't want to sink, sir. She's still hanging on over there. Just a propeller showing now, sir. She ain't got much longer. No. Well, she did her stuff, sir. Much ship I ever served in, sir. Go for me, too, sir. A very happy and... Very efficient ship, sir. Thank you. Thank you. God bless this ship and all who sail in her. God bless this ship and all who sail in her. God bless this ship. It was Alex who said that Christmas, last Christmas, that Darren was back in port for repairs. I remember the services we had on board, the men singing. O oh, eternal Lord God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thy almighty and most gracious protection the persons of us, thy servants, and the fleet in which we serve. Looking west as us look down on the feast of Stephen, Oh, 
Colonel Edgecombe. Leaving Hardy? Having Christmas dinner at home. Thought you might care to come along. Oh, thanks just the same, but the captain's having his on the boat, so I'm staying to help out. Well, come on over later if you can. It's going to be a whole crowd. Thanks, Hardy, I will. <laughs> my family and my friends, I will now make a speech. Oh, Walter, sit down. Now, sit down. Oh, quiet, wife. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take the opportunity of this festive occasion to drink the oaths of one and all present and to thank a kindly fate for so arranging that my ship would have to come home for boiler cleaning exactly two days before Christmas. A bit of luck which any sailor will tell you is nothing short of a bloody miracle. Oh, how can you, Walter? You know I don't like you using that word. Ah, uh, be that as it may, I would like to add that I consider that we are blood uh, very lucky to be all together on this happy day. And now, I should like to propose the elf of one who is very dear to me. Oh, now, Walter. <laughs> She's a creature of many moods and fads and fancies. <laughs> she is, to, uh, to coin a phrase, very often uncertain, coy, and hard to please. What's that now? But I'm devoted to her with every fiber of my being, and hereby swear to be true to her in word and deed. Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty's ship, Torrin. Oh. Will there be anything else, Captain Kinross? No, thank you, Edgecombe. That'll be all. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Same to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, the king. King. The king. God bless him. Are you having a good time, darling? Wonderful. Teddy, look at Flags and Maureen. They've been whispering all through dinner. Yeah, we, we should never have put them together. Flag, stop whispering. That's an order. <laughs> we, we ought to drink to them. Come on, everybody, to the newly betrothed. The newly betrothed. What betrothed, Daddy? That's the beginning of the end, my boy. <laughs> well, uh, on behalf of my fiancé and myself, thank you very kindly. <laughs> Alex, as Flags and Maureen are so bashful, I think it only right and proper that you should make a speech. Oh, no. No, I can't. Honestly, I can't. Come on, Mrs. Kinroth. I'll support you. Here, here. See, see. I swear I'll never forgive you for this. Oh, dear, what am I to say? Happy Christmas. Just you wait. Come on now. Silence, everybody. Her Worship, the Lady Mary, is about to declare the bazaar open. Don't let him get you down, Mrs. Kinross. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll begin by taking my husband's advice. Hooray! And wish you all a very, very happy Christmas. I'm... I'm sure that Mrs. Farrell and Mrs. McAdoo will back me up when I say I'm going to deliver a word of warning on behalf of all wretched naval wives to Maureen, who's been unwise enough to decide on joining our ranks. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Maureen, we all wish you every possible happiness. But it's only fair to tell you in advance what you're in for. Shame, shame. Speaking from bitter experience, I can only say that the wife of a sailor is most profoundly to be pitied. To begin with... Her home life, what there is of it, has no stability whatsoever. She can never really settle down. She moves through a succession of other people's houses, flats, and furnished rooms. She finds herself grappling with domestic problems in Hong Kong, Bermuda, Malta, or, or Weymouth. We will not deal with the question of pay. That is altogether too painful. But what we will deal with is the most important disillusionment of all. And that is... Stop her, somebody. This is rank mutiny. <laughs> that is that wherever she goes, there is always in her life a permanent and undefeated rival, her husband's ship. Whether it be a sloop or a battleship or a submarine or a destroyer, it holds first place in his heart. It comes before home, wife, children, everything. Some of us fight this and get badly mauled in the process. Others, like myself, resign themselves to the inevitable. And that, my poor Marine, is what you will have to do. That is what we all have to do if we want any peace of mind at all. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my rival. It is extraordinary 
that one could be so fond and proud of her most implacable enemy. This ship. God bless this ship and all who sail in her. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents Ronald Coleman and Edna Best in Act Two of In Which We Serve. And now, let's shadow a young lady walking up Main Street on some late afternoon errands. She stops for a moment to greet a friend who says... Why, it's Mary, my dear. I haven't seen you for ages. What have you been doing to yourself? You look simply marvelous. Well, this is certainly Mary's day because just a few blocks farther on, she meets someone else she hasn't seen for quite a while. Hello, Mary. How are you? I don't have to ask. You look wonderful. Tom Locke meeting you my first day home. Hope we're going to have a date soon. Tonight, maybe? And as Mary hurries home to get ready for that date, she's thinking to herself... Well, my Lux soap facial certainly worked all right. I guess cream stars know a thing or two when they say nice, smooth skin's important. You see, Mary decided to give Hollywood's beauty care a real try. Every day for 30 days, she's been using the simple complexion care screen stars depend on. Active lather facials with Lux toilet soap. Here's what she does. I smooth lots of the lather well in, rinse with warm water, and slash with cold. Then I pat my skin dry with a soft towel. That Lux soap lather is so rich and creamy, it's just like smoothing beauty in. Yes, Lux toilet soap is a real beauty soap. Mild and pure, kind to delicate skin. Nine out of ten screen stars use this fine soap as their daily complexion care. If you'd like your skin to look fresher, more appealing, why don't you try it? Take a Lux soap beauty facial several times a day, and always at bedtime. Follow this gentle care faithfully for 30 days. Then be surprised and delighted with the new smoothness and beauty that you and others will notice in your skin. Lux Toilet Soap, Hollywood's Beauty Soap, tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. in which we serve, starring Ronald Coleman as Captain Kinross, with Edna Best as Alex. Down, men, under the water. Get down! Again and again, the German Junkers dive. But this time, it is not a ship they aim for. Their target is a group of defenseless, oil-blackened men clinging desperately to a tiny raft now the planes circle and come roaring in for the kill. He's down. Down, men. Miss. He missed. Butterfingers. Butterfingers. What's the matter, Shorty? Blimey, I... I spoke too soon. Hold on to him. Dad, did you... Did it get you badly? I... I don't rightly know, sir. Where is it, Blake? My... My arm. Nice. Somebody. Cut the... Cut the sleeve away. Carefully now. There it is, sir. Clear through the arm. Dirty rats up there. Dirty rats! Get a mother with a baby in her arm, they would. Is it a bad one, Captain? Oh, I... I don't think so. Look, boys. He ruined a fine piece of tattooing, didn't he? See there? Frieda, it says. See? Frieda. You'd be pretty mad about that, my no Frieda. <laughs> all right, oh. Shorty, all right. Oh. Easy, Blake. I... I always did hate the... The sight of blood. Blake. It, it's fainted, sir. Frida, Frida, of course. That's his wife. I met her on the train. That time, their honeymoon. Blake had leave, going to Torquay, on their honeymoon. Oh, well, <laughs> here we go, Frida. A honeymoon toast. Did your ale for you, beer for me. Be careful, Lux. It might go off top. Here's your little lot. Now then, cheerio, Mrs. Shorty Blake. Mrs. Shorty Blake. 
It does sound funny, doesn't it? Oh, you'll get used to it. There's one thing you never shall get used to, and that's you going away all the time. Well, it's your own fault for marrying a sailor. Fairly asking for trouble, that is. Can't trust any of them an inch. Wives in every port. Always coming home unexpected and catching you having tea with the lodger. <laughs> I'm the one that'll be the lodger if I'm going to live with Kath Hardy when you're back at sea. Well, that isn't for an old week yet. Think of it. Seven old days of glorious life. You like being with Kath and Walter, won't you? Of course I shall. It's you being away and me wondering what's happening to you that I shan't lie. Here, here. Proceed with the following operations as ordered. One, give us a kiss. <laughs> Two, chuck us another of Mum's sandwiches. Three, cheer up and remember this isn't a funeral... It's an honeymoon. <laughs> and four, give us another kiss. <laughs> oh, uh, oh. Uh, yes, sir. Hello, Blake. What are you doing here? On the honeymoon, sir. Just got married. Well, that's splendid. Congratulations. This is my wife, sir. This is Blake, Captain Kinross. How do you do? Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Uh, Alex, come in and meet one of my shipmates and his wife. They've just been married. Hello. How do you do? Ordinary seaman Blake, Mrs. Blake, my wife. I hope you'll be very happy, Mrs. Blake. Thanks, ever so. Are you going to live in Plymouth? Yes, that is when Shorty goes to sea again. You see, sir, she's petty off to Hardy, her uncle by marriage, sir. So she's going to live at their place for the duration, you might say. But we're spending the next few days in Torquay. And very nice, too. Well, Mrs. Blake, you, you keep him in order. My wife rules me with a rod of iron, and it's really been quite successful so far, hasn't it, darling? Oh, darling, don't talk such nonsense. I'm never allowed to have my own way over anything. <laughs> well, we won't interrupt you any longer. Mrs. Blake, you report him to me if he doesn't behave himself. Goodbye, and the very best of luck. Thanks very much. Come along, Alex. Have a good time and enjoy your leave, Blake. Thank you, sir. Goodbye for the present, sir. Goodbye. That was my captain. He's ever so nice. Yes, he's all right. That's what he wants, anyhow, and he doesn't waste time mucking about. Have you been married long? Yes, got two kids. She's pretty, isn't she? Not half as pretty as you. Oh, no. Nah. Don't talk so silly. Oh, now. <laughs> How pretty she was, wasn't she? And so very young. Yes. It's a coincidence about them going to talk here for their honeymoon, wasn't it? <laughs> I thought of that at the time. But I didn't want to go on about it. That, uh, that, that first quarrel we had, remember? You went off stamping to listen to the band all by yourself, and you came back in tears about half an hour later. <laughs> Only because they were playing the Blue Danube. You know that always makes me sort of pent up and emotional. Oh, come now. That, well, that wasn't why you were in tears, and it's no use pretending it was. <laughs> if I was in tears at all, which I hotly deny, <laughs> it was probably because that was the very first time I discovered what a disagreeable, horrible character you had. <laughs> Still, it was a good honeymoon, as honeymoons go. Yes. It went awfully quickly. Ah, now look at that. What is it, Teddy? Oh, more news about the Altmark incident. British seamen overpower crew of German vessel in hand-to-hand -hand encounter. Ah, this thing positively haunts me. I believe you're jealous. Jealous? I should say I am. Oh, Teddy. You know, you promised at breakfast not to go on about it anymore. Well, I always seem to be refitting or boiler cleaning or something when anything really exciting happens. I'd give my eye teeth to have the chance of a show like that. Never mind, darling. There'll be lots of other chances. And lots of other shows before the war's over. Lots of other shows before the war's over. From the lug of the Tallinn, August 16th, 1940. Sighted line of enemy destroyers, speed 30 knots. Line of bearing 250. Opened fire 2,000 yards. <laughs> Lead round to 090. Oh, 20, sir. 20 a port on, sir. Corps, get your complete torpedoes off. Not more than two at any ship. Flags, next to the division train tube support. Aye, aye, sir. Main office, make Tommy Tommy port. That lead ship's on fire. Ship to the next. Aye, aye, sir. Check, 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 check. Ship target right. Follow TBI range 030. Check, check, check. Ship target right. Put that shell on the ammunition hoist. Listen, what's going on up there on deck? We're in a fight there. Well, that's what's going on. But what's happening up there? Off that shell. That ain't for us to know. We just keep feeding the shells up to them and they do the shooting. It's like working in the dark down here. Just listening, never knowing. Off that shell. If the ship was sunk, we'd be caught. We'd never get up, never. Keep them coming, keep them coming. You see, we were hit then. Next shell, keep moving there. I'm going to look. I'm going up. Hey, you. I've got to see. I'm not staying here. I'm going up on deck. Hey, get back here. Cover that! Jump! Lower deck clear, 
it, sir. Thank you. Send him an E. Aye, sir. Ship company! Send that E! Now, make yourselves comfortable. We're all pretty tired. First, I'll hold a short memorial service tomorrow for our 36 shipmates who lost their lives. And to return thanks that the old ship herself has come through safely with many of her complements. I expect Hitler is even now conferring the Iron Cross on the man who claims to have sunk us. <laughs> Secondly, I want to tell you that you all did pretty well in the trying time we've been through. When a torpedo hits a smaller ship as a destroyer, the result is bound to be fairly devastating. And I can understand the temptation to think of your own skin first and of the ship and your shipmates second. In a way, I suppose it is gratifying... But out of 244 survivors, 243 behaved as I hoped and expected they would. One man, however, did not. One man who left his post without permission. I'm told he's only been in the Navy for six months and in this ship for two months. Even so, I feel that in that time I should have been able to make it clear to him that I did not expect and would not tolerate such behavior. Well, I failed. And I won't punish a man for an action for which I must largely take the blame. But after this, there will be no more cautions. Next time we run into any trouble, and as leader of a striking force, this ship should be in plenty. Next time, I know that no one will fail to do his duty to the very end. Thank you for making my task so easy, and the tar in a ship to be so... so very proud of. Dismiss. Yes! All right, men, clear the way here, clear the way. Give them room. We are, uh, we're moving the wounded, sir. Good. Make them as comfortable as you can. Well, Blake, how are you feeling? Fine, sir. Thank you, sir. You got a bit, uh, concussed, didn't you? Yes, sir. I think so, sir. The first lieutenant tells me that you stuck to the gun even when most of the crew were knocked out. Is, is, is that true? Well, sir, somebody had to do it, sir. You did very well, Blake. We're proud of you. Thank you, sir. Captain Kinross, sir. Yes? Can I... I speak to you a moment, sir? Yes. Captain, I... That man who left his post, it, it was me, sir. I know. I just wanted to say, sir, it won't happen again. It won't, sir. You'll see. That's all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lots of other shows. Before the war over. Today, June 4th, the British Army has received orders to evacuate Dunkirk. Ship coming up! And that is! Men, no operation of war that the Navy can be called upon to perform is less pleasant than an evacuation. But the whole of the British Expeditionary Force is falling back on Dunkirk. And it's up to us to get them off. We all know the leg pulling that goes on between the services. But the soldiers are our brothers in arms. And we must go in in greater heart than we've ever done before. Let them see how much we admire the way they've fought. And don't forget that, that the success of our evacuation will be measured by the smallness of the military casualties, not the naval ones. The soldiers will be our guests. Their lives will be in our hands. The position of danger and therefore the position of honor is, is at the head of the line of our ship. I shall be the senior officer of the destroyer. Which ship would you all wish me to send in first? Hmm? Well? The Tarin! The Tarin! The Tarin. Thank you. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> In just a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Ronald Coleman and Edna Best, will return in Act Three of In Which We Serve. If there's anything lovelier than a June day, it's certainly a June garden. Oh, Jane, so many different kinds of flowers. Roses and lilies and, and those gorgeous flowering shrubs. Yes, and look how beautifully all the colors blend in the sunlight. I really think, though, my favorite time in the garden is late in the evening, especially after a rain. Oh, why, Jane? 
Because then you get the fragrance of all the flowers together in one delicious perfume. That's when I'm the happiest about my garden. It's true that no perfume is fresher, more appealing than the fragrance of many flowers together. And that's why women love the delicate perfume of Lux Toilet Soap. It's a light, truly flower-like fragrance. No less than 34 costly ingredients are used to make this Lux Soap perfume, all blended by a master perfumer into one distinctive, haunting fragrance. Screen stars are delighted with it. Say they love the light, clinging perfume their Lux Soap Beauty Bath leaves on their skin. Yes, it's luxurious, this fragrant satin smooth soap, but it's inexpensive, too. So many cakes of Lux Toilet Soap are sold each year that women everywhere can buy the beauty soap of the stars for a trifle. Why not get some fine white Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow? Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll have a little talk with the captain and his lady after the play. But now here's the third act of In Which We Serve. Starring Ronald Coleman as Captain Kinross, with Edna Best as Alex. The destroyer Taran has not yet sunk to her grave. Her head is down, but her keel still shows above water. Now the men clinging to the raft strike up a song. A gesture of defiance to the enemy planes that strap them from the skies. A challenge to the sea that engulfs them. Captain Kinroth's eyes are turned to where the Taran lies. But he's thinking of other days. Of the Taran at Dunkirk. Of the Taran seeming into port for a long-earned rest. The day with his wife on Sussex Down. One day of peace in a world at war. We're going home now. Pack up the hamper, Bobby. Yes, Mother. Oh, Teddy, what a perfectly lovely day it's been. Lovely for us, I mean. I suppose that selfish of me. Oh, selfish. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe that it. it's so dreadfully wrong to forget the war every now and then. When one can, just for a little. Well, darling, I think it's very clever of you. With those planes dogfighting over our heads an hour ago. Oh, I made a tremendous effort and pretended that it wasn't real at all. They were toys having a mock battle. Just to keep us from you. <laughs> what a shameful confession. Sheer escape, isn't it? I don't care. It has been a lovely day. The sun has been shining, and the country does look so very green and sweet and peaceful. And you are on leave, even if it's only until the day after tomorrow. Teddy, I wonder where we shall all be this time next year. Yes, a lot may happen between now and this time next year. September 27th, 1940. Continuing their nightly bombing of coastal towns, it is estimated the German Luftwaffe sent more than 250 planes against Plymouth during the past 48 hours. Tonight, dear. Oh, fine, thank you. Oh, that letter from Shorty must have cheered you up. I wish it was home. I wish the Torin could get just a little damage. I'm not so that anyone was hurt, I mean. But just enough for them to get a bit of leave. Oh, never mind, Frida. Men must work and women must weep. That's what I always say. Listen, here they come. Oh, dear, again. Yes, a bit later than last night. Frida, I wish you'd go down to the shelter. Oh, please don't start all that again, Mrs. Lehman. You know I hate being shut up down there. It makes me feel sick. I'd much rather say, uh, really, I would. But in your condition, dear, I honestly do think you... It's should... no use, Mother. Why don't you leave her alone? It's all very fine you being so calm and collected, but I'll tell you one thing here and now. My nerves won't stand much more of this night after night, and that's the truth. Well, you can go down to the shelter if you want to. Nobody's stopping you. Try as I may. I can't understand why you won't shut up the house and evacuate. I told you why till I'm blue in the face. This is Walter's own mother. And he expects to find me in it when he comes back on leave. Now, what do you suppose he'd think if he turned up unexpected one day and found the house locked up and me hiding somewhere in the country? And he might only have a few hours. 
Now, oh, that would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Well, you could let him know where we were, couldn't you? Oh, it's we now, is it? Uh, I thought there was a catch in it. Why, Kathleen Hardy, how can you say such a thing to your own mother? Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. But you make me tired sometimes, really, you do. I'm sure I was only trying to be sensible. And what about the garden? And Walter's bulbs that he's so proud of. Now, who'd look after them? Bulbs don't need any looking after. They just come up. Mm, that was a bit closer. Come on, Frida. Under the stairs you go. Your chair's all ready for you. I'm all right here. Careful as I am. Oh, never mind about that. Just you do as you're told. There's a good girl. We'll leave the door open like we did before, so you won't feel lonely. Oh, careful. Oh, I'm now. I'll bring you sewing. The light's quite good in the hall. Oh, dear. I don't like this, Catherine. It's no use pretending I do. I know you don't, Mother. Nobody does. But there's no use in making a fuss now, is there? Come on, dear. Cheer up. There's a dear. Listen. Take it in closer. They're right over this way. Oh, now, Mother. Dear. Cat! Let it remain. Oh, oh, Daughter, oh, yes, oh, one for you. Oh, Thanks, Percy. Oh, easy now, easy. Eddie, Squatter, Sister, Betty, Barry, Kiki. Walter. Walter. Oh, hello, Shorty. Come in. I uh, just popped along to see if you'd had any news from home. Ah, uh, not so much as a postcard. That's Kath all over. In all the years we've been married, she never got a post right yet. You heard from Frida? Yes. How's she doing? She's, uh... She's all right. What's the matter? It's Kath, Walter. She and her mother. See, they was all in the house together, and... They got blitzed. What do you mean? Kath got killed. Both of them did. Frida was all right. She was under the stairs. Oh. Well, I see. Lord, I'd better tell you, and seeing that... Well, I mean... Uh, Oh, thanks, son. I'm much obliged. Thanks very much. Uh, I think I'll go out on the deck for a bit. Why do? Uh, I'm glad Frida's all right. Yes, yeah, she's she, she's fine. I, we uh, we got a son. Well, that's good. That's fine, Shorty. Congratulations. <laughs> Torrin's going down, sir. Well, she, she did her best, didn't she? Yes, sir. There goes the Torrin, boys. Three cheers for the ship. Three cheers for the Torrin. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray. She's down. All right. All right. There's a ship, sir. Where? Off to starboard. Where is the ship, sir? Well, let's see. It's, it's the Tomahawk. She sees us all right. She's coming this way. She sees us. 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 Up you go, man. Come on. Coffee's waiting for you. Easy, mate. Doctor's coming. Glad you're all right, Captain. <laughs> Thanks. How many of my men have you picked up? Ninety, sir, all told. Ah. Some of them are rather badly knocked about, I'm afraid. Well, where are they? Mostly between decks, sir. The dive bombing's pretty incessant. Yes, I'll go down to them. Glad you're okay, sir. Getting a bit worried about you. Thanks, Moran. <laughs> Nothing like a good swim <laughs> before breakfast. <laughs> That's right, sir. My captain. Want to see my captain. I, I want to see my captain. It's all right, old man. I'm here. Captain. Easy, easy now. My, my mother. Write it down, sir. The address. Flags, take this. Yes, sir. Number 17. Just as you turn off the high street. My mother. Plymouth. All right, old man. I've got the address straight. I'll let her know. Thank you, sir. There's 
Another one, Flags. Get this address, too, will Yes, you? sir. Captain. Yes. yes, here I am. Captain, I see... I, I can't quite hear, son. Try again. I said I didn't run away this time. I know, I know. Other time, I ran away from both. But I... I didn't run this time, Captain. You did a fine job, old man. Thank you. And don't worry. I'll write your family. I'll tell them they can be proud of you. Mrs. Chim wrote. Telegram. Telegram. Oh. Thank you, Emily. The girl's waiting for an answer, ma'am. Oh. No, Emily. There's no answer from the captain, and everything's all right. I'm so glad, ma'am. Thank you, Henry. Mother, mother, what is it? Was it from Daddy, Mother? Yes, from Daddy. He was picked up and taken to Alexandria. He's quite safe. Oh, Mother. He's quite Company present, sir. Thank you. Stand easy, please. Ship's company. Find that east. Men, I've come to say goodbye to the few of you who are left. I've always tried to crack a joke or two before, and you've all been friendly and laughed at. But today I... Well, I'm afraid I haven't any jokes, and I don't suppose any of us feel much like laughing. The Torin has been in one scrap after another. But up to now, most of us survived and brought the old ship back. Now she lies in 1,500 fathoms and with her more than half our shipmates. They lie all together with the ship we love. And they are in a very good company. We have lost her, but they are still with her. Those of us left will... Take up the battle with even stronger heart. We know twice as much about fighting, and we've twice as good reason to fight. You will all be sent to replace men in other ships. And the next time you're in action, remember the Torin. As you ram each shell home into the gun, shout Torin. And so her spirit will go on inspiring us until victory is won. I should like to add that there isn't one of you that I wouldn't be proud and honored to serve with again. Goodbye. Good luck. And thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Captain Kinross, uh, the men would like to say goodbye to you personally. Oh, I wish they would. Uh, come forward, men. Uh, one at a time. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Shorty. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Good luck, sir. Good luck, Hardy. Goodbye, sir. God bless you. Thank you, Edgecombe. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Best of luck, sir. Thank you. This ends the story of His Majesty's ship, Tauron. There are other ships, and there always will be. And men to fight in them. Men like Shorty Blake and Walter to ram shells into the breach and whisper as they do, There's a Tauron. And men like Captain Kinross on the bridge, quiet-spoken, staunch-hearted men who fight now so this world of ours will find peace forever in the days to come. Open fire. <laughs> The curtain falls on tonight's play, but the drama will go on until the cause in which we all serve is finally victorious. To Ronald Coleman and Edna Best, our congratulations on a distinguished performance. Thank you, C.B. I think the Torin is a symbol of the hopes and gallantry of all the United Nations. 
And it seems very fitting that her story should be told in this month of June, 1943. June has been a very fateful month in this war. June of 1940 was the month of Dunkirk. And June of 1941 was the month Hitler attacked Russia. And in June 1942, the Germans and Italians had reached El Alamein in the Egyptian desert. But June 1943 has already spoken for itself, and it still has nine days to go. Perhaps Noel Coward will have another play suitable for June 1944. By the way, Edna, you, um, you acted with him on the stage, didn't you? Yes, Ronnie. We were in the Constant Nymph together in London. I've always marveled that Noel Coward could do so many things and do them so well. Writing, acting, directing, even writing songs. Oh, come now, C.P. You could write a song, too, if you put your mind to it, if you ever tried. <laughs> if, you'd ever, if you'd ever heard me singing in the shower, you, you wouldn't encourage it, Ronnie. <laughs> well, it's probably the luck soap that makes you sing, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> I know as a complexion care, it makes a lot of women very happy. Uh, we, we can't hear too many people singing the praises of luck soap, Edna. And I think you'll like next week's play, too. Comedy or drama? Drama, Ronnie. Paramount made the picture, and it's called The Great Man's Lady. And our stars will be Barbara Stanwyck, Joseph Cotton, and Chester Morris. If you saw the picture, you'll never forget Barbara Stanwyck's fine performance as Hannah Sempler, from a girl of 17 to a woman of 109. They say there's a secret in the life of most great men. This woman was the secret in the life of one. Barbara Stanwyck, Joseph Cotton, and Chester Morris tell the story next Monday night in The Great Man's Lady. Yes, it was a good picture, and I look forward to the play. Good night, C.B. Good night. Good night. Good night. That was a ship shape performance. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's something we can all do to help the men aboard the ships of the United Nations. It's very well expressed in a slogan that originated in Boston. Dip your lip and save a ship. I understand this slogan and some fine cooperation between Army, Navy, and civilians has been instrumental in eliminating gossip about troop and ship movements at this large embarkation point. So let's take a tip from Boston. Dip your lip and save a ship. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Barbara Stanwyck, Joseph Cotton, and Chester Morris in The Great Man's Lady. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. In Which We Serve was produced at the studios of Two Cities Films Limited and released by United Artists, whose latest picture is Stage Door Canteen. Heard in tonight's play were Pat O'Malley as Walter Hardy, Charlie Lung as Shorty, Claire Videra as Cat, Gloria Gordon as Mrs. Lehman, Esther Mason as Frida, and Frederick Warlock, Dennis Green, Eric Snowden, Robert Regent, Norbert Muller, Mary Lou Harrington, Fred Mackay, Vernon Steele, Alec Harford, Douglas Grant, Anthony Marsh, Roland Drew, Virginia Gordon, and Raymond Lawrence. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John N. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Barbara Stanwyck, Joseph Cotton, and Chester Morris in The Great Man's Lady. Mothers, what kind of vitamins do you give your family in these days of food shortages? Make sure you get enough. Get Vim. Vims are scientifically designed to help make meals complete. They give you all the vitamins government experts say are essential, balanced in the formula doctors endorse. In addition, Vims give you all the minerals commonly lacking. At your druggist, VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals, VIM. Start taking VIMs this summer. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.